How's it going? What was the weekend? Uh, the weekend was good. Uh, a lot of resting going on, a lot of sleeping going on, actually. Was that because of the game or because just there was that point in the season? I would just say the days off, that's kind of just how I let up, just um, being able to rest, sit back. Um, I had some family come out, um, so just a chance to spend some time with them. What was the, the body like after that much work for the first time? Um, actually, I was, I felt quite great. Um, I think that night I saw DeAndre Hopkins and Isaiah, and um, Hopkins was saying he felt like he could play another game. Um, no, nobody was sore. I wasn't sore, at least. Um, and so body felt really good coming out of that game. You uh People are going to talk about you. You're not you're not the biggest back that is going to be out there, but you you play pretty tough. You play pretty rugged. Um, is that just always been kind of your thought process? De uh, definitely. Um, I just felt like um, I have a, a tattoo on my chest that, that's a lion. So I feel like I've always had the heart of a lion, that determination. Um, no matter if someone's bigger, faster, or stronger than me, um, I definitely uh, feel like I'm going to take myself um, nine out of ten at a time, ten out of ten at a time. Um, and so um, I feel like it's just that deter uh, determination, drive, and the will. You guys lead the league in fourth down attempts and fourth down conversions. How do you feel about being in that spot where you guys are doing it so often? And we want to be competitive. Um, I just I remember in like first few team meetings, uh, Coach Cliff was always saying we're going to be competitive on fourth down, um, and so uh, we're we're living quite up to that. Um, just going forward um, and putting ourselves in position. You mentioned DeAndre you feeling like he could play another game. How much energy and passion did he bring to the team? Not only in the game, but also just even in the short week leading up to it. I feel like um, just going out there, you, you, you step on the field with DeAndre Hopkins, and you know he's all business. So I feel like collectively um, as a whole, you want to bring that same energy um, to kind of match because you know what he's all about and you know what he brings to the table. And so, um, I mean, just even for a guy like me, uh, a young guy like me to go out there with a veteran, a veteran guy um, kind of makes me want to play better and step up for the team. You've always been, you know, hey, what the team wants me to do, I'm going to do that kind of stuff. And, and Cliff made it clear that when James comes back, he's still – lead back, but do you feel like you've earned more snaps as we go along? Not even that. I would just say um, preparing. Um, just never stop preparing, um, waiting for that moment to come. Um, like I said um, some time ago, I've always prepared as if I was the starting running back, um, not knowing what may happen, and I feel like that should be everyone, everyone's goal um, to train like a starting running back. And so um, whatever happens, like I said, um, whatever they decide to do with me, whatever they decide to put me in, I'm going to do um, it to the best of my ability. Is there any part of you that was wishing you got those eight more yards? Um, so I wasn't really thinking about it. I, at the time where I was pulled out of the game, I felt as if I was close enough to it or I probably had already had it, um, something I wasn't thinking about. But um, at the end of the day, we got the win, and that's all that, that matters. You know, are you one of those guys that's highly motivated by where you were taken in the draft? Not really. Um, I would say I don't feel like that there was that many backs um, drafted before me that were better than me. Um, but where where I am, um, what draft pick I was doesn't necessarily matter more so about finding the right fit. And um, I feel like that, that place is here. Going back to the fourth down stuff, you guys have had more attempts in the fourth quarter than, the, than the, any other quarter. Why do, you, why do you think that is? Possibly um, could be because we were down um, at one point in, um, in time in the game. Uh, that's the only thing I could think of. What's your relationship like with Brandon Ike? Oh, that's my dog. We probably talk literally once a day, um, um, depending on if uh, I know he's in practice or not. Um, sometimes it may be pushed back to the next day, but I would say probably um, every two days for sure I'm talking to Brandon Ayuk about whatever may be going on um, with Arizona State, whether what's going on over there. You, got, got, you guys got Christian McCaffrey now just chatting up a storm. And so um, uh, that's my brother. And uh, we went through this process together, and um, we're going to stay close for sure. Does it make it any more interesting that you guys are in the same division and ballot? It does. Um, I think, what was it? Um, was it the Eagles game? There was one game where we fell and we, they fell at the same time. And he was kind of just trying to make make a joke out of it, saying that, hey, um, you guys kind of helped us out as long as we lost and you guys lost too. So um, I hit him with that this weekend, of course, um, losing to the Kansas City Chiefs. But um, Brandon and I, like I said, that's my guy. And we, we just have a, a great time chatting it up. Did you watch the Sun Devils play Saturday? I did not. Um, I saw a, a tiny bit of the game, um, and then my sleep. The sleep kicked in. The sleep kicked in. <laughs> you had 45 yards. You had DJ Humphreys pulled from the left tackle up the middle. Yeah. What do you 
what do you think of that play design? And had you guys run that before? Um, so it was just kind of a new look um, that we knew that they were going to get into. Um, they sent a lot of cross dogs, and um, DJ just did a really good job of um, picking it up. Um, we thought it was po possibly going to be either the end or the um, – other outside line or the other linebacker, but um, the way they just ran their blitz and um, DJ came across the line and read it perfectly, which opened the hole. With the ups and downs so far in the season, but now after this win, DeAndre coming back, a lot of different things. What's what's the feeling on the team now moving forward uh, for the, you know, from this weekend to the rest of the season? I would always say there's always been an um, optimistic outlook. Um, when you look at it, um, I think last year the 49ers had, um, like I think, a 3-5 and five record going in um, to week uh, 9. And so they just were able to get it clicking at the right moment. Um, uh, so I think there's always been that optimistic feeling going in that, uh, hey, we got a bye week coming in soon. Um, not soon, but sometime later down the road, um, get a chance to get some guys back healthy and um, get going and get that run on the roll. Um, that, those are some things that in team meetings that he's brought up, um, just teams uh, and records over their, their weeks and how they make a push in the playoffs, and it's all about the right time and clicking it up. So. I want to ask you, you were talking about you know, the line cut to and all that. Um, do you consider yourself a small back? No, no. Nah. Um, so me and Antonio Pierce um, at uh, ASU always used to go back and forth about scat back, and I would always used to show him weight. I'm like, I'm 210, I'm 211. There's no, um, definitely no scat, uh, scat back here. But um, um, I definitely, I guess you would say, ideally you would say, yeah, you're small back. But I, in my mind, nah, I definitely feel like I'm like 235, 6'1", for sure. So um, that's the way I like to play in my mind. Thanks, Daniel. Yes, sir. Obviously, we're very happy with the turnovers and like that production part of it. Um, but there were some, you know, there were still um, some misfits early on in the game. Uh, I had a couple bad plays um, early on. Went pretty clean for the most part after that. Uh, just still, just you know, like Billy says, he said, you know, win, lose, or draw, we're still going to get. He says, you're still going to get this coaching. So it's like it's nice. You're going to still learn, learn from the mistakes, even though it's still a win. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we were happy with the win, but we, you know, we could have played probably better defense, um, especially towards the end there, you know, just giving up those yards. How was your weekend? It was good. It was good, yeah. Everything special? No, just hung back, relaxed, you know, uh, saw my family, and it was, it was nice. Does a mini buy feel like a buy? Yeah, yeah, it does. When you're, I mean, when you're every day in the office and you take, you know, two days out, you're kind of like, whoa, what do I do with my life? <laughs> You know, so it's it's nice. Um, it's really nice the little two day break. It was early in the season. JT said that you would come in early, and with Buddha and some other guys, on the leaders on defense, sort of yeah. had those early morning sessions. And mm -hmm. what were those all about? And are, are they starting to pay off? How, how valuable have those been? Yeah, we do. They're just kind of like communication meetings. Um, so basically, whenever we see certain certain things, we all interpret it the same. So whenever we do make a call, everyone like agrees with it. Because, you know, there was a lot of, there's, when there's gray, there's like some arguing uh, as far as like what technique we want to use in certain situations, if that makes sense, um, when it comes to coverage and stuff like that. So um, there was just a little gray area. So whenever we meet and stuff all together, we can all get on the same page. So whenever we see it, we're all on the same page. And, you know, one person makes the call and we just roll right into it instead of being like, no, no, no. And that's kind of like where we... You know, the, the offense is rolling. You, there's no time to say that. You just got to make a call and roll with it. So that's kind of where it's, it's helped us in communication, I believe. It's safe to say offense is trying to make those communication errors, right, by defense, right? That's, they're trying to yeah, move. just trying. Yeah, that's what all the movement is and all these all these offenses, all the, um, you know, McVay, Shanahan, all these off, offenses that just have guys moving all over the place. Um, West Coast offense, you know, they're motioning someone all the time just to, you know, they build 
they build their uh, what do we call it kind of their formation and then you know you got to make a call based on that David, how much pride do you take it you yourself and the defense take in limiting the other team's big players on week after week uh, yeah we do take a lot of pride in that obviously we, we do take a lot of pride in that we take a lot of pride in uh, you know uh, total yards is kind of like what we were we were kind of beat up about last week because they had quite a bit of yards. Um, but, you know, limiting limiting uh, their big players and making them, you know, get back into a corner, that's kind of like what we like to do. Um, so, and it's, it's worked well. What are, when you look at the Vikings offensively, what is the first thing that stands out to you? I mean, Dalvin Cook is crazy. Uh, Justin Jefferson's a really great athlete. Kirk Cousins is a great game manager, great quarterback. Um, you know, it's just, it's the NFL, it's week after week. You're not going to be like, man, this guy sucks. It's like, that's what people ask me all the time. It's like, who's the best? Friend? I was like, they're all good. I mean, what are you going to say? They're all good. I mean, even the guys are, maybe they're not big name guys, but they're still, they all have their traits. They all have their, you know, abilities that put them in that first, first position spot. So I think, you know, just dissecting that offense and then just trying to take away what we can and uh, back them into a corner. Kevin O'Connell coming from the Rams. Have you seen enough to notice yet? Are there a lot of similarities? Uh, no, I haven't seen enough to notice yet. How's it going to be uh, seeing Jordan Hicks out on the other side? Yeah, seeing Jordan's going to be fun. I try to talk to him every once in a while. So, you know, see how him and his family are doing. He's really good, really good dude. Uh, he helped me a lot, you know, kind of with, uh, you know, just learning the game um, and learning how things work in the NFL. He was really good to me in that aspect. And uh, he's, he's given me a lot of knowledge and a lot of uh, breakdown and stuff like that. And uh, he's he's uh, really helps me. He's really helped me, and uh, it's going to be nice to see him. Do you just feel yourself getting better? I mean, do you just like first like as a person and as a player? I think it's just I just a lot more comfortable um, within the NFL, um, within our scheme, uh, understanding concepts, understanding offenses, how they work, what they're trying to do, situational stuff. Um, you know what the call is saying to us. Uh, obviously, the green dot helps too because VJ's sitting there telling me certain stuff too. Um, but it, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely slowing down. And you know, we talk about in our locker room and you know in our defensive meeting rooms, just going out every day and just putting the work in. I think if we just continue to do that as a defense, we'll just get better. Um, it's not just me; it's just everyone. We've gotten better and better and better each week. If we continue to do that, we'll we'll be fine. How much of an adjustment is it wearing the green dot and listening to the fans? It's not much of an adjustment. I've I've had it. I mean, I had it all of training camp last year. Um, I had it in the preseason games last year. I had it all the preseason games this year. I've had it every game this year besides the first game. But I had a half. I mean, I had it in the last quarter and a half of that first game. Um, it's not an adjustment. Um, obviously, if you've never done it before and you put it on, it's a big adjustment. But um, it's uh, it's it's not that bad. OCs will tell like the quarterback like what they're seeing you know before it cuts off at 15 seconds. Do you get some of that feedback from fans too? What you see? Uh, personnel, um, kind of like on a like a stop down. We're uh, they're, they're loading their huddle. We're loading ours, trying to see you know what what they're coming out in. You know, personnel wise, he'll give me a couple play calls. Um, if they're in this, we're going to run this. If they're in that, we're going to run that. And then you know he'll tell me um, some other stuff for the other guys. You know, third down situations watch the ball, I mean, just the basic stuff like that, but just stuff that reminders because I'm sitting there talking to everyone. But, yeah, it's nice to have him in the air. You said you had a couple of bad plays early in that game against the Saints and then corrected it. Are those typically mental? Is it more physical? Like, is there a pattern, like, things that, when that happens? Um, yeah, it was just – it was like a few mental uh, just misgap fits there at the beginning, but um, – Nothing crucial. It wasn't like a critical play because it didn't bust out. But obviously, you know, if they slip through it, it can get critical real bad. Um, but uh, it was just uh, just just simple mistakes, you know, stuff that shouldn't happen that happens. And it wasn't because offense did something crazy or scheme. It was just that I'd, I'd messed it up. So that's kind of where you kind of, you know, get slapped on the hand there by yourself because you're it's just simple stuff. When people are running, you know, exotic looks and doing crazy things, then you're kind of like, okay, I understand. But, you know, with simple stuff like that, it shouldn't happen. Is there anything you can take from last Thursday's win and moving forward as a team, as a defense? Yeah, I think we just went out there and just played. And just, you know, short week, went out there and just said, let's get after it. You know, who cares what happens? We're just going to go, win, play, no matter what it is. And I think that's what we did well. 
uh, just went out there and just, just played hard. D Hop was mic'd up. Looked like he was just talking all the time. Yeah. Was, was there a different vibe? Uh, yeah, d definitely having D Hop back on the sideline is a different vibe, and it's, you know, different vibe for the de uh, opposing defenses because he's a huge target and it's hard for them, them to stop him. But just watching what he does, um, there's a sideline play where he throws his ball, like he threw his hand up, and I'm like sitting there thinking the ball's going to go high, and all of a sudden I see the ball come out low, and he stops and turns around. I was like, oh, I would have been wrong too. <laughs> so it's like, it was like, it's just stuff like that that, you know, you're just kind of sitting back and just like, oh, it makes sense. So, um, but yeah, it's definitely a, a vibe with uh, D Hop on the sideline. He's very, you know, he gives a lot of mo motivation throughout the whole team, not just the offensive side, defense too. How, uh, what did you see when you were uh, running in front of Isaiah with that six there? Yeah, I, d I was at the line of scrimmage, and um, when I saw the ball thrown, I looked back to see if it was going to be completed or not to run down there to get a call. And uh, I saw him hit it and bobble, and I was like, oh, he's got a pick. So you just try and find the first guy of the opposing team. Well, I, and I mean, it's Isaiah, too, so it's like, you got to get on your horse now if you're going to try and block for him. So I, I ran, and I caught up to him for about half a second, probably a tenth of a second, and then I was like, yeah, you got it from here. So, but yeah, it was uh, it was good to see him have that pick six. Where were you on Marcos, and did you see the float? Did you see a live? I didn't see that. I don't remember where I was at on that play. I think I was, uh, I was uh, on a, on a back to the flat or something like that. I was on the other side, but I do remember running and all of a sudden seeing him jump. I was like, oh my. But he's, he does that parkour. He's, <laughs> if you guys saw the video that they posted, it was funny. We, I've, I've given, given him hell about that before. So, but uh, yeah, it was crazy to see him do that. No, I'm too big for that. I'll keep my two feet on the ground as much as possible. I'll try to. Thanks, David. Thank you, guys. Sorry for making y'all wait too. I apologize.